Perfecting the Google Nexus 7 Android Tablet. This is part one of two. The Google Nexus 7 Android Tablet is really good. Really, really good. I like to think of it as the little computer that could. It can handle email, web browsing, Skype, instant messaging, GPS, voicemail, multimedia, uh, Samba file browsing, the entire amazing suite of Google uh, app apps and almost anything else one would want to throw at it. It does, however, suffer from two well-known hardware weaknesses. One of two, it only has a single front-facing camera. There's no rear camera. And two of two, it has no uh, SD flash memory card slot, so internal memory cannot be expanded beyond the basic factory configuration that comes, and that usually means it's limited to 32 gigabytes. Now, I've overcome both of these limitations with simple hardware mods that can be done by anybody without even opening up the case. If you want to do these mods, you won't have to solder anything, uh, you won't have to disassemble anything. I'll discuss the second of these two mods in a subsequent episode, but today, I'll show you how I modified the front-facing camera to take pictures of objects or people in front of me while I'm watching the display as if I had a front-facing camera. In fact, in some ways, it's even better. I do this with a tiny little periscope made out of a craft store mirror attached to a bent metal ruler. And here it is. Because it's rather delicate, I carry it around with me in a uh, small box padded with a cotton ball. And it has held up to the rigors of daily life for several months. I've been using it with my Google Nexus 7, and I also used it with a previous tablet that I had. Now, this may look cumbersome, but using the periscope is surprisingly easy. Holding my tablet in the usual landscape configuration, um, I activate the Google's free camera app in the usual way, and the tablet's display immediately shows an image of what the camera is facing. In this case, it's looking at me, and I see a picture of myself. Um, my right thumb naturally falls near the shutter button, so I can press it to turn uh, filming on and off. My left thumb is idle. Um, I then slide the metal base of my periscope beneath my left thumb to position the, the mirror directly over the camera opening, and immediately I start seeing what's in front of me, because the image is coming through the mirror and reflecting down into the camera. I can see object in front of me and I can look down and get the kind of view that one would expect and hope from a rear-facing camera. It's surprisingly easy to position the mirror. In fact, I found that it really doesn't matter if it's a bit crooked since it's natural to just kind of re-aim the, the camera to get the view that I want. Capturing photos and video clips in this manner is easy. Whether I'm seated or standing up or walking around, I have full mobility and a big clear display showing me exactly what I'm going to get in my, in my image. Um, I feel, and I feel far less self-conscious than I would if I had to turn it around and uh, look at the back of the display and stare like this and kind of fumble around trying to find the buttons. That's just, that's just not good at all. Uh, this is a natural, nice position. I've captured numerous still shots and video clips in this way, and I have to say, it's extremely convenient to have a camera with me all the time that's packaged inside the tablet that's the constant uh, digital companion of my choice. Incidentally, the automatic upload feature of, the, of Google Plus is also very helpful in this situation. Any photo or video that I don't immediately delete is automatically uploaded to my private Google Plus cloud storage volume with an option to share it with friends or delete it or make it public from the prominent simple Google Plus controls. Now, I do need to confess that the situation is not perfect. I wish my tablet had a rear-facing camera, and if it had one, I would use it. But it just doesn't. It's just not there. There are several weaknesses to this system as follows. First, the front-facing camera here suffers from modest resolution and a small imager. Image quality is not going to impress your friends that uh, lug around a big, expensive digital SLR camera. In good light, the images are, uh, you know, compare favorably with the kind of quality you get in a DVD. Two, you need to keep that mirror clean. If you have dust or smudges on the mirror, they will degrade the quality of your captured images. Three, usually the reflected image will include a little bit of the top edge 
of the tablet. You can see a little of the top edge of the tablet, and you'll see that in the sample images I've got here in this, in this movie. You can edit this out in a subsequent step, and if you're really, really careful, you can almost make it disappear by positioning the mirror exactly right, but I've generally found it easy just to, just to live with that. Um, four, your tablet's gravity sensor will cause your video clips to be displayed upside down if you have your device tilted forward like this when you press the shutter button to stop filming a movie. It seems it doesn't cause any problem to move your device to any desired angle while you're filming, but I have to make sure that I have it inclined this way when I stop. If I happen to be kind of looking down like this upside down when I stop the film, it's going to play upside down afterward. A fifth disadvantage your photos and video clips will come out as mirror images, flipped left right, left right reversed, as if you're looking through a mirror, because in fact you are looking through a mirror. Now if you can accept these small compromises as I have, I think you'll find that you, you can really enjoy that little camera a lot more with a little camera periscope. I know it works just fine for me. I built mine out of just three components. One of three a one inch square mirror. I think one inch is about the right size for this. The type of thing you can find in a craft store. I had to buy a bag of 20 of them. I can't remember what I paid for that bag at Michael's Crafts, but they weren't very expensive. And I just did a Google search and I found I can get a bag of them at uh, called Craft Mirrors. I did a, a Google search for Craft Mirrors and found packages at Beverly's.com for $2.99. Not expensive. Secondly, I had to buy a steel ruler. I bought a cheap six inch steel ruler at the local craft store and I think I paid about three dollars for it. It's made of thin, flexible, springy steel. And three, I used a dab of glue. I used DAP Strong Stick from DAP Industries which I bought at Home Depot. Construction was simple and the steps were obvious. First, using a pair of tin snips, I snipped off the length of that ruler to an inch and a half. I just used a one and a half inch piece of that six inch ruler. If you don't have tin snips, perhaps garden shears might do the job. Next, using a pair of strong square-nosed pliers, I bent the final half inch of this at about a 45 degree angle. And finally, I glued the mirror to the ruler as shown here. Once I had the three parts in hand, the entire uh, construction task was completed in less than uh, maybe half an hour. And that's it. I hope you all enjoy your Google Nexus tablet as much as I have and that you get some extra enjoyment from your own Periscope Enhanced Camera. Works for me! In our next episode, I'll show you how I expanded my tablet's flash storage so that I can watch any of hundreds of movies that I carry around in my pocket. Stay tuned, and thanks. We are very pleased that so many people are finding our content on YouTube. However, if you are using only YouTube to explore these clips, you're missing out on a lot of the best information. Please join us at AskMrWizard.com where you'll find this clip, all of the related clips easily located, along with related text, illustrations, and advertisements from vendors that sell related equipment. You'll also find forums where you can ask and receive answers to your questions. Your support at our site keeps us going, and we appreciate it. Thanks.